Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm reacting to Rapid Fire Round Karan Johar with Sadhguru. So, don't know anything about it, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna take the liberty, Sadhguru, to do what I normally do on my television show, uh, uh, which is a, a, a rapid fire round. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the, See, normally the end of I've, this round… When I was young, I watched a lot of, uh, you know, Wild West movies. Right. <laughs> so when you fire, I also fire, all right <laughs> no, but, <laughs> no, I promise you, this is not that kind of… you're not in my line of fire <laughs> uh, at all. I will not take the liberty of being that… that person. Uh, these are just quick questions which when I ask for one word, you have to stick to that. Because sometimes you have a tendency of not exactly answering the question asked. Uh, but… Uh, uh, I will say he… he goes on stories, <laughs> that's for sure. But you give such a profound and prolific retort back that it makes you very satiated. But in this case, my only uh, request is that if it's one word, then it's just one word. <laughs> okay. And the end of this normally… Um, so he should say, just keep it short and simple. Uh, you get a hamper, uh, but… <laughs> In the absence of a hamper here, you already have a something, cow. right? Yes. A hamper? Uh, in the U.S., a hamper is something you put clothes in, or at least where I'm at in the U.S. What is a hamper in this scenario? So, uh, <laughs> and uh, all this beautiful bouquet <laughs> that is right next to you. But so there's no hamper, but you do will get uh, my utmost gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, very simply, what is the one thing that is essential to living a balanced life? Sense. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I just, uh, I just thought of uh, what he says, like one word. <laughs> said sense. I was thinking awareness. But I don't know if that is something I would even say. Balanced life. I was, uh, uh, to have a balanced life, you must be balanced in anything that you do. A middle ground, that's what balance is. Not too much right, not too much left of whatever, uh, whatever subject matter you're talking about. Right in the middle is the balance. <laughs> <laughs> I took that literally. <laughs> One word. What is the one thing we must absolutely do away with in order to lead a balanced life? Senselessness. Yes. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. Right. I thought that was coming. <laughs> first thing that comes to your mind when I say the following, the first thing, organized religion. Oh, I… Uh First thing that comes to mind with organized religion. Man, I don't know, I can think of so many things. You can go from extremes to non-extremes. There's good and bad. People, I guess, would be the one thing I'd say. Madness. Ooh. Marriage. Unity. Cohabitation. <laughs> mm. Competition. Competition. I swear, I'm not, I'm not good at these rapid-fire rounds. Plus, especially if I haven't really uh, thought about these things. Competition. Um, competition is a one word already. I would say bringing out the better. I can't do one words. I'll try to do as little words as possible, but bringing out the better, maybe? Stupid. Oh, ouch. Money. Greed. <laughs> that was quick. Useful. <laughs> Love. Uh, happiness. Can I say a sentence? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will allow that. <laughs> most beautiful, but unfortunately crippling for most people. Ooh. If I can. Little elaborate that. See, if something unpleasant cripples you, something nasty cripples you, 
it's acceptable. When something beautiful cripples you, it's a true disaster. If you could ask one person, alive or dead, one question, who would you ask and what would that be? Yeah, I don't think I'd have one. I'd pass. Just, there's no one, I don't think, that's... Al oh, alive or dead. Okay, wait, never mind. Hold on. Alive or dead? That's really strange. I don't think I have one. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe I do if I have to think about it, but... I really sorted out all my questions because... I did not spend time educating myself or doing anything. I spent my entire life sorting out every damn question I had. I've kind of run out of questions. <laughs> For me, I don't know if I have done that or whether there's just a question out there that I want to know. I've... I'm sure I have questions, but figuring it out or observing it, I like, I guess. And you certainly have not run out of any answers, <laughs> and you never will. Best advice you have ever received? Best advice I've ever received. Sadly enough, I guess for me, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a, uh, like a very high quality advice. But it's the YouTubes here, so I s did start some channels or, or or channel this channel too, and the one the advice that they gave is just to keep posting content every day, consistently at least, not every day, but be, be consistent about your post. That's it's not exactly like a really high quality life of con uh, sorry advice, but it's the best one I've got. So. I don't know if, what that says about me. It's like, I've gotten no good advice, I guess, maybe? Hmm. Nothing. Never? Uh, no. I never sought, nor did I receive. I made myself in such a way I'm incapable either of seeking advice or giving advice. That's a lie. You always give good advice. Sir. <laughs> you talking alone gives good advice. <laughs> In an imaginary, completely hypothetical situation, if you had a day off with no commitments, no responsibilities, what would you spend the day doing? Easy, riding a motorcycle. I can already tell you that one. For me, probably catch up on some sleep. <laughs> oh, if I'm wrong. There are a lot of things. This can't be one word. <laughs> no, it's not one word. <laughs> See, oh. I have an indiscriminate, indiscriminate sense of passion towards everything. There were lots and lots of things I did at one time, but these days time is not allowing me to do that. So generally if I have little time, all I do is play golf. Oh, jeez because uh, that's safe and within the city and I can get back in time for something else to be done. <laughs> but if an entire day is left to me, which they have not done for a long time, <laughs> they have not left it to me. If that happens, I will close my eyes and sit because that is my… the best, the best… I am at my best when I truly have nothing to do. Figured he would ride motorcycles. So I remember him always talking about that story, how he always enjoyed going riding motorcycle. He he worked just so he could afford afford gas so he can ride on a motorcycle. What is one thing you'd like people to remember about you at the end of your life? Oh well, that that is definitely not a question for me. It'd be nothing because I have done nothing practically in my life. With said guru, I'm going to try to make a guess here. Um, what's one thing? 
like you'd like people to remember about you at the end of your life. Ooh, uh, I have no idea. You could say many different things. Kindness? They must live so wonderfully that they don't even remember me. Ooh, ow. <laughs> If you found a way to travel through time, where would you go? I'd… I'd… you know what? I'm not going to answer. I'd go into the future. How far in the future? Uh… I don't know. I'd, I'd be curious. I don't know how far into the future. I'd definitely go far… maybe 3000. 3000, uh… year 3000. Or 3030. Or 3,333, somewhere around there. <laughs> Just to see what the world's like in, what is it, uh, 1,311 years from now. <laughs> that, that's what I'd say. I'm kind of done with all those things. <laughs> Your universe visited already. You have visas for every part of this ecosystem. If uh, we can do some slow fire, yeah. Because uh, that's a question with uh, many ramifications. This, for example, traveling in the world, we jetted around and now we want to travel to the Mars, we want to travel to another place. And now that's not enough, we want to travel into the past and future. All this longing is again exploratory in nature. Whether you go on vacation to Maldives or you want to go to Mars, it is fundamentally exploratory. Maybe you're also thinking of relaxation and pleasure and whatever, but essentially it's exploratory. Otherwise, why can't you do it here? It's something that you want to do. You want to touch another place. This longing is there in the human being only as long as the life that you are remains in a seed form, that is, it did not sprout and blossom. This happened when Adiyogi was expounding the science of yoga and talking about the nature of the cosmos, how it's related to your individual self and what you can do with it. Then the seven sages who were with him, they asked, what is the nature of this cosmos? How big is it? Where does it begin? Where does it end? So he laughed and said, your entire cosmos, I can pack it into your mustard seed. Because your ideas of time and space are essentially because you are living within the framework of your intellect. If you cross that dimension, then there is no such thing as time and space. Everything is here and now. So, uh, traveling through time, space, no, it means nothing to me because it's difficult to express, difficult to articulate. If I sound little… I have a reputation of being very logical, but if I sound illogical, or silly to you, you can blame it on my jet lag. I just come from United States after six weeks, so you can say maybe he was jet lagged. That's why Sadhguru is saying something silly. But I'm fine. I'm saying this because you can't fit the universe into your silly little logic. Today's human being is too overly enamored with their own logic that they're missing the entire life, the gamut a phenomena that's happening in the existence is missed because the only way you can accept anything is it has to fit in to the square hole of your logic. <clears throat> um, hmm, wonder why that's the reason why I use puzzles in my, uh, my logic and understanding. Anything that doesn't fit into your logic, you will reject. In this, you rejected the entire cosmos. In this, you have rejected the magic of life. You have become a slave of logic and completely missing the magic of life. Although I'll say I don't reject things just because it doesn't fit. It's more along the lines that I have the puzzle but I haven't put it together to understand it yet. 
So, this time, space, all this stuff is because intellectually you are trying to dissect the universe and try to understand this, this, this. Tell me if you sit here, suppose you are very joyful, do you see, you will not know how the day passed off. And if you are depressed, do you see the day won't pass? So time is a consequence of the miserable nature of human existence. If you are truly blissed out and ecstatic, you wouldn't know what is a day, what is a year, what is a lifetime, you wouldn't know. There have been times I sat down, I didn't realize, I thought it's five minutes, but people gathered around and started molesting my feet <laughs> well, because uh, they… in their understanding, I sat there for many days or whatever. This idea of time and space is a very convoluted idea simply because people are stuck in the framework of their logic. My work, my fundamental work is to take people beyond the framework of logic into the true magic of existence, our own existence. But it takes a lot of time. Still my reputation is of being very logically correct because I'm still trying to woo them <laughs> Still wooing them, you know. For the real thing to happen, they will take a long time unfortunately because they have become such slaves of their logic. <clears throat> I wonder if the phrase, uh, time flies when you're having fun will apply to what he's saying. Because I'm sure m this is something a lot of people could relate to where they're just watching a movie or doing something fun and then they look at their watch and like, oh my gosh, three hours flew, it felt like only five minutes. I wonder if that… I wonder if that phrase goes along the lines of what Sadhguru was just saying there. What is the first thing you notice when you meet a person? Their face? <laughs> um, I mean, like literally when we first meet, it's going to be maybe your face or your hand if you're shaking and no words has been spoken. Just to be quite literal there. Just everything. <clears throat> everything. Everything. Past, present and future. <laughs> Is it more important to do what you love or love what you're doing? Do what… Is it more important to do what you love or to love what you're doing? Oh, uh, that for some odd reason it sounded the same, I think I get what I was saying. To do what you love or to love what you're doing. I mean, if you do the second portion, that's the same as the first, is it not? Is it more important to do what you love or love what you're doing? Because if you love what you're doing, you're doing what you love. Or there are, I mean, maybe they are the same, hold on. <laughs> to do what you love or love what you're doing. I can see if you nitpick it, you could say like, um, you may not like doing washing the dishes, for example, I guess, um, and say like, ah, I don't love doing this, I could do something else, so I'm technically not doing what I love. But if you say, oh, I love cleaning, even though it may not be uh, the most fun thing to do, you're, you'll love what you're doing and you'll enjoy it. I wonder what Sagur would say here. One word or more? <laughs> Short and simple. The choice is entirely <laughs> yours. Short and sweet. See, if you are an intelligent person, you will try to do what you love most. I get what he's saying there. <laughs> but if you're wise, you'll, uh, you'll love what you do because… because you can't always do what you love but it's life becomes simpler or easier or more enjoyable if you love what you do but if you're a genius you will do just what is needed <laughs> i'm sorry that i think that's what uh bill gates kind of said uh he said if i if i need anything to be done efficiently 
I'd hire the laziest person. And I'm like, what? You think about it a little bit, and I'm like, I think I get it. Basically, the laziest person will find the easiest way to do something. So if you want efficiency or the easiest way to do something, a lazy person will do that. We'll find that. I don't know how well that works out, though. Because <laughs> if you have a whole bunch of lazy people, then I don't know <laughs> if things will get done, but I get what Bill Gates was trying to say there. If you could be invisible for a day, what would you do? It's not a lot to do in a day, so I guess I'd go to sleep again, too. <laughs> I don't know. Catch up on sleep. Again. <laughs> You wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, hey, Sadhguru, we would. We couldn't see you, but we'd be able to hear you. We didn't say you were silent, we said you were invisible. <laughs> and we can see your clothes unless you go around naked. Nah, I don't know. How to, I don't know what the, the, uh, the speculations of being invisible is, whether the clothes are invisible too or not. Technical, just being technical. With due respect, what is your biggest weakness? My biggest weakness? What's that word I'm looking for? Uh, oh God, I can't think of it, so I'll describe it. Keep putting off things. I'll do it a little later. Uh, give me about five minutes. Two hours. Hmm? I can't remember biggest? what the word is for some odd reason. What is your biggest weakness? Procrastination. See, what normally people treat as weakness in their lives. Okay, let me give a normal answer. <laughs> why, why am I going into all this? Already you said I'm what? What is the word? Sashed. <laughs> <laughs> biggest weakness is, I love danger. Without danger I cannot live, I need to do something which… which keeps me on the edge of being mortal, being alive and dead, I want to walk that line all the time. Every day I'm stepping on it one way or the other. Is it a weakness? I don't think so, but people think, Sadhguru, you shouldn't risk your life like this. But if there's no risk, there's no uh, I'm feel… I feel I'm not being… because most of the time in my life, for whatever I'm doing, I don't feel tested. It's only in moments of danger that I feel little tested. So my weakness is, I like to be stretched, you know. For all the time when I was riding across India and later on I started driving, my only wish was uh, that to find a machine which will test my skills. Always found the damn things broke down if I took it to my limits. These days recently I'm beginning to get to do a few machines which are testing me whether I can push it all the way or not. <laughs> Maybe that's because of my age. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was kind of saying there, he, he seems the, the border between life and death, the testing of his mortality, which would be in the way I had a hint on that was um, pushing his body to the limit in a sense, testing the fragility of being human. If I had met them much younger, uh, I think I would have managed to <laughs> work around them. <laughs> One thing the world doesn't know about you. I don't know if there's anything the world doesn't know about me. I know there's some people, some people don't know certain things about me, but that doesn't necessarily mean everyone in the world. There's one thing that everyone in the world doesn't know about me. They don't know a thing about me. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> I 
and the one thing you wish you could change about yourself. Hmm, I'm not sure. To change about myself, I don't think there's anything to say that it changed the decisions I made in life. There's plenty of that. Oh, I never looked at that. I could speak Hindi. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Marathi. <laughs> the one thing you wish you could change about the world. One thing I wish I could change about the world, that is kind of strange. <clears throat> For some odd reason I thought of Thanos about how there's limited resources, but to provide unlimited resource would also be a curse. There's a an experiment that was done with rats, I forget what it was called, in, in, I can't remember what it's called, but I'm sure you can google it, it's a very interesting experiment that Rats were kept in this cage and they were provided unlimited food and unlimited water. And it was a very extremely fascinating um, study. Is it a hundred percent accurate? I mean, not sure, but it was still an interesting discovery. I highly suggest you Google that on YouTube. Google that on YouTube. <laughs> YouTube that on YouTube. Uh, I will have to. Uh, it's, it's, it's a right. Anyways, um, what could I change about the world? See, that's the thing. I, I would say add more resource, but then again, people will probably be ungrateful, and maybe the rat experiment thing might happen. So that's not a good thing. Honestly, I don't know. I don't think there's anything. I mean, obviously, we'd love the wars to change, but then it's forcing people to do. Uh, forcing people against their will in a sense to uh, do something uh, one thing you wish you could do to change about the world I don't know I guess maybe the language just say there's one arbitrary language that everyone understands maybe that it doesn't force anyone into anything it makes communication a lot easier at the very least and whatever this arbitrary language is, everyone can speak it. It seems so... It seems so useless, but maybe it could potentially bring out, bring out the greatest change. Because at least there's one language that everyone can speak and understand. Maybe make it uh, a little bit easier to communicate. Globally, that is. We're not having to deal with translators, because not everyone speaks the, like every language in the world. Every language in the world. Seems kind of shallow, but I have a feeling maybe if we had, there is one language, whatever that language may be, it could potentially make a big difference. Oh, a lot of things. One. Human beings. <laughs> Desperately in need of. <laughs> so, what would you consider to be your greatest achievement? I have none. All right, that was easy. <laughs> I don't think there's any. Oh, wow, okay. Because I always fall awfully short of my own expectation of what I could do. I wonder if I were to tell him about the, uh, the Shiva Linga, I believe. The one thing that he was trying to create um, throughout his life. I wonder, would he not consider that his greatest achievement? Hmm. So, I never feel anything is an achievement. <laughs> is there a song you love and can listen to all the time? No. <laughs> 
I uh, I would say I've I listened to a lot of songs that I really like until I don't like them anymore. <laughs> And then I'll listen to them after like a month or two of them listening to them. Oh. <laughs> I somehow, uh. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Probably because, uh. This, uh. came to me at a certain time when I was, uh in my early teens maybe. So this one song kind of comes back to me more often than anything else. It's not that I even seek it but somehow one way or the other this song keeps coming back to me. Is uh, how many times <laughs> Okay. I know you haven't seen any of my films but do you have a favorite film? Um. I do have a few, I guess you could say Endgame or Infinity War. I mean, that's pretty simple, but is there a deeper one than that? I don't think so. There's different categories, but just to simplify it, Endgame or Infinity War. Oh, I've seen many good movies. At one time I saw a lot of them. I've not seen much of Indian cinema, uh, but I saw a lot of, uh, you know, uh, English cinema. But one movie that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed at that time, because on that day the way things happened, many life situations fell together and everything, was Roman Holiday. Oh. Well, I have to say that that's the first film I've ever seen in my life. My mother took me to the cinema. <laughs> Here we are. It is true. <laughs> Roman Holiday is the first film I ever saw. It was my introduction to the big screen. I don't know what that is. I'm glad I have something in common with that. You. <laughs> <laughs> that image of uh, Audrey and Gregory Peck is Gregory. somehow just stayed with me. <laughs> Wonderful. It was probably my age. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it must have been. Something you enjoy doing and wish you had more time for? Something I enjoy doing and wish I had more time for. Ooh, um... There's a lot of things I enjoy doing. Sleep! Um, oh, okay. <laughs> I do enjoy doing that. I wish I had more time for it. <laughs> um, but I can't think of... That's so odd. <sighs> Something you enjoy doing, wish you had more time for. Um... I... Hmm... Hanging out with friends and just talking to them? Or sleep. Strangely, I can't think of something for that one. That's weird. Something you enjoy doing. I enjoy doing almost everything. But I wish I had more time for Obviously, as you get older, the time portion becomes more significant. But I generally enjoy doing a lot of things. I guess sleep. But hang out with friends and talking, I guess. I don't know. I don't think that's the right answer, but that's about the closest answer I could come up with. I wish I had more time yep. <laughs> because I made myself like this that there is nothing that I enjoy or do not enjoy. I make sure I enjoy everything that I do <laughs> including simply sitting quietly or talking to somebody or doing whatever because my activity is not limited to one area, so many things. If you did not enjoy everything that you do and do not do, you will go insane trying to manage so many things. But I'll not go insane because I enjoy being alive. Activities, anything is okay. Everything I do, I enjoy. <laughs> Small things, big things, every kind of thing. Most profound things and silly things, I enjoy thoroughly. <laughs> I should us all. <laughs> Lastly, in a biopic made on you, who would play you? 
Well, there wouldn't be one in the first place. So no one. But who would make a biopic first of all? <laughs> <laughs> well, there would be lots of interest oh, in yeah, people. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Maybe you should animate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you still have the voice, said Guru, so who would still play your voice even then? I don't think you would want that. <laughs> Well, that, that is the end of the rapid fire and you totally deserve the hamper that doesn't exist on this platform. Uh, but it's a virtual hamper that I've given to you with my love, gratitude <laughs> and deepest amount of respect. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what is a hamper? I'm, I'm, I'm lost in that one. Again, in the, at least in maybe my region or something in the United States, a hamper is something that you put dirty clothes in or, or clean clothes. Just put clothes in to either get washed or is washed. That is kind of strange. What is what is a hamper? Let me know, because I have no idea. <laughs> Anyways, that's my reaction to Rapid Fire Rounds, Quran Johar with Sadhguru. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.